Welcome back. It's your boy C Rock in that one studio in the Woody Made of, or on the Woody Made of show in that one studio. <laughs> Getting started here with another great guest for you today to share what they're made of. We have Robin Graham here. And before I introduce Robin Graham, I want to welcome everybody for, you know, if it's your first time being here, uh, if it's your second or third or more, thank you for coming back. It means the world to me to have viewership, listenership, and, you know, support. And just want to remind you that if you like the show and you're getting something out of it, the guest, Please go share with your friends, family, coworkers. Tell them about us. The word of mouth spreads and like and subscribe. All right. So we have Dr. Robin Graham here today, and I, I want to introduce her, and then we're going to ask her the most famous question in the world. Uh, she is the founder and owner of Robin Graham LLC and the creator of the purpose of results, success without social method. With an emphasis on mindset, strategy, and action for one-stop business growth coaching, she helps small business owners and entrepreneurs, especially those in the health and wellness industry, like health coaches, life coaches, and creatives start and grow sustainable businesses and have a meaningful impact without being chained to social media. Man, that's interesting. Welcome to the show, Robin. Thanks, Mike. I'm honored I, to be here. Super excited to talk with you today. Yeah, my pleasure. And I got to say, chain with, without being chained to social media. Um, yeah, I find that hard nowadays <laughs> because of what I do. Um, I, I got to tell you, I reach out on Instagram every single day uh, ever since the pandemic to about 50 or 60 people that are like people that I would want to surround myself with and try to get them on a 15 minute call to genuinely authentically connect with them. And, uh, but I can't imagine if that went away, I had to figure something else out, I guess. There's, there are other ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. We used to mail people, uh, mail pieces back in the day in the mortgage business. But anyway, we're going to find out more about this here in a second, but before we do that, Robin, what are you made of? So I'm going to give you five words, and I will say they are faith, curiosity, passion, resilience, and drive. Yeah, those all work for me, man. You're speaking my language. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So where did it all start for you? Where did you Where did you come from? I know you're in Pennsylvania now. Did you grow up there? Or? No, I didn't. I grew up in a tiny little town of 3,000 people in Southern Illinois. So not Chicago. Everybody always thinks Illinois is Chicago. Not the case. I grew up in Southern Illinois across the river from St. Louis. Yep. So I grew up there and farming community, tiny little town, could not wait to get out. I wanted a high power career, wanted to wear a suit every day, make a ton of money and have an impact. So I went to pharmacy school in St. Louis, got a doctorate degree and worked in corporate for several years, met my husband. And then we moved to the East Coast for his job. And that was my first foray into entrepreneurship because my company didn't have a job for me on the East Coast. So I started consulting and set up my own business in the pharmaceutical slash marketing slash managed care arena and smooth sailing until our boys were playing travel sports and it just got to be a little too much for everybody involved because we had no family here. We didn't have a support system, right? Our friends became our family, but I couldn't necessarily ask them to help with my kids. And the nanny that I had, my daughter was only three and a half at the time. So we were at these different phases, right? Two boys that were older and then my daughter and my husband traveled globally 50% of the time and I was traveling and doing conferences and all these things. And our, we just looked at each other and like, we can't keep up this pace. Our oldest son started to show signs and symptoms of anxiety. And I was like, mm -mm, not on my watch. He is not going to have the life experiences that I had. We're going to stop this right now before it gets too heavy. And so I had always done photography my whole life. It was a passion. I was that kid that always had a camera on me. I posted all the pictures, like taped them up on my parents, you know, dining room cabinet and showcased everything. And so it was my love, my passion. And so I started a blog, started showing my, my photography to the world and had my first branding client within six weeks, fell in love with that. And so I focused on headshot and branding photography for about 11 years ish. And then as I was doing that, I started consulting for people who were trying to build a business, primarily women. And I recognized very quickly, they didn't 
know how to build the foundation for their business. And so I became certified as a brand strategist, got a master certification as a life coach. And that's how I got to where I am today. That coaching became so much more impactful than the photography. And honestly, I got kind of tired of hearing, can you make me look 20 pounds lighter? Can you remove all my wrinkles? And people not wanting to truly show their authentic self, wanting to be someone else, thinking that was going to help them build their business. And I'm like, nope, you know what? I'm I'm out. (laughs) I'm done. So I took my both strategic thinking and creative abilities. And that's what I do now is I help entrepreneurs grow their businesses for sustainable success and a lifetime of limitless earning potential without having to necessarily be on social media. Yeah. So, all right, let's, I got to unpack some of this stuff here. Okay. First of all, what do, you said something about foundation, right? That's some uh-huh. of the things that you see that they didn't have the foundation. What do you mean by that? And could you elaborate? Cause I have some questions around that. Yeah, absolutely. So oftentimes what will happen is people get a, it's kind of like putting the the cart before the horse. They're not going to go anywhere. Right. And if you don't have systems and processes in place, if you don't have clarity and confidence around your message, if you aren't reaching your soulmate clients, those clients that are going to fulfill you while you're having an impact working with them and helping them solve their problems, you're not going to go anywhere, at least not from a sustainability perspective. So when we build that foundation, we're, we're really identifying our personal brand and what differentiates us from everybody else in your niche, your area of expertise, fine tuning that message so that you reach those people that are truly the people that you're meant to be working with, that you're called to work with, that are going to help you fulfill your purpose while serving them. And then as we build that foundation, we're not just jumping on social media. We're going to build the website so that it has search engine optimization. Our messaging is clear. Google can find us. Other search engines can find us. And we're building that foundation so that we don't have to backtrack later. When we try to build something on social media, and I'm not completely opposed to social media. Don't get me wrong. But the majority of my clients are women. And social media has done a major um, disservice to them in terms of creating doubt, fear, imposter syndrome. They put all their eggs in this basket. They spend hours and hours and hours trying to build an audience and grow a business and sell their products or services on social media. And then it falls flat and they end up exhausted, burnt out and feeling like an imposter because they see other people doing it, but they haven't been able to achieve it. Let's be honest. Can we be honest here for a second? Yes. Most people aren't having success like they show on social media. (laughs) Right. I mean- like right. they, like we look at these folks and they think we're think oh they got this coaching business and they're jamming on and it's also, and we don't know the truth. No, you don't. And follower counts don't mean anything because somebody can have a million followers, but they could have been bought. They could be bots, and we Talk don't know the how they got that. We're not the Amy Porterfields of the world, right? Where they got in at the ground level, and Instagram as a company saw them as an opportunity to make more money through them. So they were promoted and they were kind of handheld for many years on those platforms. That's not how it works today. Mm -hmm. It's more of a pay to play and it takes an an exorbitant amount of time and energy. And, you know, you mentioned that you reach out to people authentically to grow connections. That works for some people, but it doesn't work for everyone. And here's the reason why. One, people get so stuck in their head and they lose authenticity. Two, there are so many people out there who hire people to just reach out and do cold calls, right? And they come in and they try to sell you straight away. That's just annoying. So then people are put off and they're like, you know what? This isn't the place for me. It's just annoying. Or their feeds are filled with sales or, you know, ads or, you know, whatever. And it's not fulfilling them. And so they don't want to waste their time. These are moms who have kids. They're, you know, juggling a million different things and they really want to grow their business. And so they're coming to me because they, they love that catchphrase of grow your business without social media. That doesn't mean you can't be there at all. That doesn't mean, you know, we can't use those platforms for our benefit, but when we use those for our benefit, we're creating a profile that means we don't have to be there 24 seven and people can still get to know who we are and then follow our guide 
direction to where we want them to be, which is our website and our email list. Yep. Yep. All right. So a couple of things on this. So I talk about this all the time. It's all celebrity is manufactured. So mm -hmm. the, the people that you talked about before that were coddled by Instagram, mm -hmm. Instagram pushed followers to them. Of course they did. Right. And then as it went on, now it's a new thing. Now, now you have to manufacture, you got to get in engagement groups. I know the game. I, I do the game. I talk about it, very transparent about it. Um, but you got to be able to back it up too. So you're talking about the foundational part, how important that is. If you were to go out and manufacture celebrity on social media, but you didn't do the foundational work like that you're speaking of, you wouldn't be able to back up your quote unquote celebrity on social media. And uh -uh. so uh, what I want to do is take it even a step back further because systems and processes are important, website, Google search optimization. But you mentioned the ladies a lot of times when you were taking pictures of them, can you make me look 20 years younger? Can you get rid of the wrinkles? They need work foundationally on their mindset and their self-image yes. too, right? And that's what you do too, 100%. right? You're working like, yeah. so I want to talk about that part too. Like that, isn't that foundational? Absolutely. We have to believe in ourselves. You know, our, our beliefs are going to empower our thoughts and our thoughts are going to empower our feelings and our emotions, which in turn determine our choices and behaviors and our choices and behaviors obviously are going to produce our outcomes. So if we have a false center of belief, we're not going to create anything positive in our lives or our businesses. We have to have a foundation of belief in ourselves. Like for me, faith is incredibly important. So I believe that, you know, anything is going to be, be possible for me through God. So, you know, that's part of my core foundation. And, you know, the more I believe in the power that he gives me and how, the more I believe in my brain and my abilities that are God given, the more positive I'm going to think about what's possible for myself, my life, my clients. And that they could come to me from anywhere at any time, which is made possible through Google and search engines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, man, there's so much to talk about here. All right. So I want to touch on manufacturing celebrity again a little bit, like what they're doing, because it happens all over the place, not just Instagram. It's uh, presidential candidates, all sides. Mm -hmm. They manufacture celebrity. They figure out ways to get, get in the news, cause mm -hmm. a scene to get in the news. It's all about attention, <laughs> right? So without social media, you got to create attention somehow. Now you mm -hmm. can, like some people might go Google searching for someone that's a life coach or fitness coach, health coach. But when you're talking about not using social media, how do you, besides like their website and things like, how do you, how do they get prospects in the first place, get eyeballs in the first place mm -hmm. from what you, you know, work with them on? So if you think about it, social media is a place where people go to maybe gather information they're not necessarily ready to buy. They're not there to actually seek a solution. When people go to Google, they are going to Google because they are ready for a solution. They're ready to get out their wallet, pull out their credit card and buy. And we know that when people hit, when you come up in a SERP, a search engine result page, when you come up on that page, people, 98% of people will buy from that first page and they'll choose the top two options, not necessarily sponsored options, but the first two options when they actually find a, an emotional connection with the page that they can act on. So when we're talking about life coaches, health coaches, the people that I'm working with, this is all possible because we can drive that traffic to the website. Now, it's not as simple as you build your website and they will come. You still have to do some work. You need search engine optimization, but you also need to have a presence, right? So that's not to say you if we're, you're not on Instagram on a daily basis and promoting content there every single day, you can still craft your profile so that your bio has those key phrases that you want to be known for. You have nine posts. So you have a grid that explains what you do and who you serve. So when people land there because of the hashtags you're using or the key phrases you're using, now they, they understand who you are and they'll go look at your website. Email marketing is huge, but how do you build your email list? Well, that's where those social media platforms can come into play. That's where your website comes into play. They hit land on your website. They can click the button immediately for a free resource that is going to help solve their problem. The key is most of the time, those free eBooks or lead magnets, we call them, aren't going to necessarily solve their problem on their own because what happens is they get hung up and they think, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know how to start. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to do. So then what happens? They keep consuming your content. 
They love being on your email list because you're giving them solutions. They can listen to your podcast. They can listen to you when you're a guest on other people's podcasts. And so that trust is built and you become the person that they're like, you know what? I have to work with her. I, I have to work with him. They're going to solve the problem that I can't solve for myself. But it's yeah. all based on that no love and trust factor. And I say love because like is like, but love, that's that soul connection. When they they really, truly believe that you're the one that is meant to help them. Yeah. And when you're, when you're push, pushing stuff out there, you really want to focus on the why and the what and the how you keep. And the how's the part that they pay for, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But if you so think what, of... Why. Simon Sinek's, have you, have you followed yeah. like, you know, his golden circle where that mm. why is in the middle. So people are going to buy based on personality and that part of your personality, your personal brand per se is your why, why do you do what you do? What differentiates you to inspire you to do your why, you know, your whole life's journey brings you to where you are and has given you the experiences to be able to learn and garner those expertise that you have. I mean, as you, you know, you asked me to say where I got started, you know, my journey is so atypical. It's very a linear yeah. medical to business, you know, <laughs> like you, but, but here's the thing. I'm a strategic thinker and I'm creative. So everything that I've done over the course of my life has given me the opportunity to learn and grow and really master the skill sets that I have today. Yeah. I agree. It's a definitely a different path. I mean, it's like in reverse in a way, not monetarily, but like you'd, you'd think that you'd work up to being a doctor and you'd stay in that profession. So, all right, let's, uh, let's go into the emotional side of things from your past that you've dealt with that were very tough for you. Do you have some stories for us where you got into a situation where it felt hopeless or you, you know, <laughs> oh, it felt boy. like there was no light at the end of the tunnel? So my book is titled You, Me, and Anxiety, Take Action Over Anxiety to Enjoy Being You. I grew up as a very anxious introvert. I was probably what you'd call like a nerdy or geeky kid. I was not socially very skilled. Um, I was the one that would kind of hide in the corner and watch what everybody else was doing. And I think curiosity kind of helped me break free from that to some extent. But when you grow up with such high levels of anxiety and you have that journey of really self hate, like it wasn't self love. It wasn't, you know, trusting myself. It was always being afraid, being doubtful, not necessarily being able to step into new situations or do the things that everybody else was doing because I was afraid. And that anxiety carried through all the way through the work that I did to attain my doctorate degree. And there were some pretty dark days in that time. And that's why I ended up writing the book, because when I saw my son start to show signs of anxiety, I thought, you know, this is so much more prevalent than anybody ever thinks it is. And this was, you know, before it became a buzzword where now we see so many people use anxiety as an excuse. And I'm not saying they don't have anxiety, but there are a lot of people who don't have a clinical diagnosis of anxiety and they're using it as an excuse to for the behaviors that they're choosing or the decisions yeah, yep. that they're making. Well, and for those of us who actually have a diagnosis of clinical anxiety, it can be truly debilitating and it can be very challenging to overcome. And that is where my passion from all the mindset work comes from, because we really have to do the work on a daily basis. It's not one and done. It is truly recognizing what you believe about yourself, what is possible and catching those negative anxious thoughts before they can manifest into something bigger and greater and more debilitating. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, we can let our thoughts run wild and then before the, you know, they, they manifest something that you're, that you're, you're fearing in, in yeah. the Bible. It talks about do not fear a lot. I don't know how many times I've seen yeah. it. How many times it says, how, how, how hard headed can we be as Christians not to listen to that? <laughs> You know, it's like it's telling you over and over again. It's one of the most common phrases in the Bible. Do not fear. And yeah, and so afraid, yeah. what do you was there a core cause do you think of that or is it genetic or for you? So there are a lot of things. I mean, scientifically, you know, we're born with 
the amygdala, which is this tiny little part of our brain that is was created for fight versus flight. And, you know, when you think about our ancestors, the cavemen, they they didn't have the resources we have now to know, OK, I am safe or I can make sure that I'm safe. They didn't have those resources. So it was automatic that they're they were on guard all the time. We still genetically have that component of our brain. And if you grow up in an environmental setting where anxiety or dysfunction is present, then that's going to escalate. There's also epigenetics. So what happens when our grandmothers have our parents in utero actually influence our brain, our mind, and how we end up being from a mental health perspective. So there is a lot to that. Um, it's, it's, multifold. It's not just one thing or another. There's genetics, there's environmental factors, there's so many different things. It, yeah. You know, it just the things that life throws at you that you have to experience and then figure out how to navigate. Also the resources, you know, what resources were available to you. And a lot of us when we were young didn't have resources because who was talking about mental health when we were young? Nobody. No, I mean, it so was people... something that was so apropos. You don't, you don't admit there's yeah. anything wrong with your brain. So many people run to pharmaceuticals too, so fast to, for anxiety. Yeah. And, and is, sometimes is that always it's the answer necessary. The no, not necessarily. However, sometimes from a clinical perspective, we know that when a person is on medication and doing therapy in combination for six months or more, they're going to have better results. But it takes six months and oftentimes, and this is why it's not that I'm like, oh, take medicines. Yeah, I'm a pharmacist, but there is a time and a place and there is an appropriate um, respect for medications, right? They're not something to just run to automatically. But I do believe that there are a lot of people out there that with a chemical imbalance in your brain, you need the medication so that you can be open to what a psychiatrist or a therapist or psychologist is actually trying to help you do. And sometimes that takes the edge off to be able to then be open-minded, have the conversations that are needed, do the activities that are needed in order to move yourself from that place of hyper anxiety or, you know, be able to navigate it in a positive way. Yeah. And there's also genetic testing I heard that you can do and you can have deficiencies of certain resources. And if you feel awesome. those or stay away from certain things, it, it, it can cut or eliminate the anxiety. So, and that's where we get into diet and exercise, right? What we put into our bodies affects our brain. Our guts determine our brain health as well. So if we have an unhealthy gut, if we're taking in ingesting foods that are not healthy for us and have, you know, chemicals or artificial colors, artificial flavors, all of those things can affect our brain. Not to mention if we are low and if we're not eating healthy and we're eating junk, then we're not getting the nutrients that we need for our brain to be healthy. Things like magnesium, um, you know, we want to offset any stress that is in our body so that we can off stress, off set the negative hormones and chemicals that are in our brain. So for example, if we're in a hyper stressed mode constantly, our cortisol levels are going to be high. Our anxiety is going to be high. And this is one of the downfalls for social media and how it does trigger anxiety. Because what happens is that blue light or seeing a like or seeing a, a comment automatically boosts our dopamine receptors. But then when that's gone, those crash and we don't have any way to rebound those dopamine levels. So, you know, getting enough rest, getting enough sleep, getting enough time away from our screens is absolutely imperative to be able to keep our brain healthy and in a sub anxiety state, right? Where we're yeah. not highly alert all the time. Yeah. And you've, you've got a background to talk about this. So I, I have a question. Um, what do you think that there is a, an intention from certain people in power to make people of the, the public more Full of anxiety and fear. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you're getting political now. Well, not political necessarily, but I think, I think it's more of a like observation and curiosity that I have because of, um, you know, a lot of times things are said in the media even sometimes. And it's like, yeah, you, you hear this thing in the media and it's it never comes to pass, but it's the same thing as you're sitting in a room or your house, but so, and you're worried about something, right? Which so creates I'm anxiety. I'm going to say this because you opened the door to this, that 
you know, the Bible says, do not fear, right? We're also supposed to trust in the Lord. However, there's this counterpart out there named Satan, right? Mm -hmm. What is his job? His job is to create doubt, confusion, and chaos. What is happening with the media and all of these things that are increasing anxiety levels, just like right now, we're in the throes of an election year. I mean, honestly, my anxiety is kind of high, right? Because you we are being fed so much information. And as a just a regular person, what's true? What's false? What right. could happen? That's huge. What won't happen? There are so many what ifs. And that is exactly what anxiety is. It's a constant state of what if. What if that happens? What if I don't do this? What if I fail at that? What if so-and-so doesn't respond to me? Well, they didn't respond to my text. That means they don't like me anymore. I mean, and this can spiral out of control so quickly to the point where you're just completely debilitated with anxiety. And you don't have to have a clinical diagnosis of anxiety for social media or other media outlets to do that to you. Right, right. And and so really, really what comes to, to the, I, I come to the conclusion of like, if you can just create uh an acceptance of okay what if that does happen and you accept that and then you just move on well like and this is where business we owners for example our trust yeah, right yeah, this yeah. is where we come back to our faith and what you believe because when you believe that anything is possible or you believe that you're safe or you believe that you know god is going to protect you or the holy spirit lives in you or whatever you want to believe when you have those foundational beliefs that good is there that good will happen that good will come out of a situation it will we create yep. you know what we think is what we create so the more we think about negative things the more negative our life experience is going to be so we yeah. have to be work do the work to shift those negative thoughts to catch them challenge them them if someone you know love and trust someone that you truly respect would not be thinking or saying the things that you're thinking then challenge them. Are they realistic? Would they be held up in court? And if not, change them. Just get rid of them. But you can where, only where, do that through practice. Where do you think these things come from? Is it from our experiences and and the things that uh, we have happened in the past? Like we failed at something in the past, or we've seen somebody else fail, and we make a decision after witnessing that or being a part of that, and then that that decision we made right after that kind of controls our narrative until we change that decision or make a new decision about that. Yeah, I think, I think that, that has a, a lot to do with it. I mean, you know, as I said earlier, all of our life experiences influence every aspect of our life and our journey and where we are today and, and how we handle situations, how, how we are able to navigate relationships. And, you know, if you think about it, exactly what you're doing on Instagram, reaching out to these people or how you're building your podcast and your company, it's all relationship marketing, right? And what happens when we have systems and processes in place, when we build relationships, we have opportunities for referrals, we have opportunities for client retention, collaboration, and all of those things build our community, which opens the door for more clients, right? So yes, 100%, some of those negative thoughts that we do get come from past experiences, things that we see, have heard, or have experienced ourselves. Yeah, but we we don't have to accept those as our final outcome. Okay, so if somebody's dealing with that, right? What are what's a practical one or two steps they can do? You're saying not believe those things, but like, how do they do that? So the way I like to approach this is, I'm not a meditation person. I know you are because I've listened to your to your shows before. But prayer, prayer, and meditation, by the way. Yeah, it well, prayer goes hand in hand. So for me, that comes with. I mean, I have to be in God's word, right? Because scripture becomes what I have to refer to in order to get myself out of a negative thought to say, okay, I need your peace. And I know my peace is only going to come through you, whatever that may be that I can depend on. Right. So there's that, but then there's also journaling. So journaling, we know changes neural pathways the way that meditation does. So when we choose to catch those thoughts, and challenge them, then we can change them by writing them down. So if you have a negative thought that is recurring, if you have a what if thought that's holding you back, causing you to procrastinate, maybe is preventing you from taking the action that you need to take to move the needle forward on your business or to make a decision, 
write those negative things down and next to that or beneath that, write down the positive. Every time we go from negative to positive, we have the opportunity to strengthen our neural pathways and change them from the negative to the positive. But this is why I say it's not one and done because the more we do it, the more control we'll have over our thoughts and then the more confident we will be in our ability to make decisions, the more our beliefs will increase for the positive and we can start literally like brick by brick, breaking down the wall of negativity and become more positive. Yeah, I love that. And you know, here's the other thing that I think business owners and a lot of people have this, they, they have, everybody has more than they need for the most part in the United States, yeah. for the most part, for especially most entrepreneurs, part. they have more than they need mm -hmm. and they spend money on things they don't really need. And we get into this thing where we get stuck thinking that those things that we have currently and that we're doing currently have, to, we have to have them to be happy or content. And I, I was talking to, I had a lady on the show uh, the other day and um, shout out to Elizabeth. She's went to this minimalist lifestyle mm -hmm. and she let a lot of things go. A lot of material things, just very, and it's not because she doesn't have money. It's just because she did, she found her energy being stuck on these material things. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm going through times, you know, a lot of, I don't know if a lot of people realize this. I try to share my story as much as possible, being transparent. Things aren't always like peachy keeny in, in business, no matter who you are. There's mm -hmm. always ups and downs, pain in the butt people, uh, <laughs> people that are more demanding than others. There's always easy ones too, but there's, there's ones that, you know, come in and it just makes your business harder and then money, cash flow issues up and down here, or there, or whatever. And you, but, but if you still get to this thing where you're like, I, I have more than I need. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that kind of releases a lot of pressure, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does. And it's funny because I just read um, in a devotion, I can't remember exactly the phrase, but more or less it's um, where our treasure is, is where our heart is. So, you know, if you think about that, if our heart is on all these materialistic things, what is it doing? Is it ever going to be fulfilled? You know, so we yeah. really do have to take that step back and analyze, okay, where, where is my treasure? Where do I see that? Is it in my faith? Is it in my relationships? Is it in things that really, truly matter for my future? Or is it on these things that could go away tomorrow, but I can live without them? And still be happy. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I love that. Well, look, I, I, I got to say, Robin, you're uh, very, very amazing. And uh, we can talk deep conversations. That's for sure. We almost went political, but we weren't really. Um, <laughs> but uh, how can people go deeper with you? Where can they find you? My Besides website you? is the best place because you can access everything about me there, including the podcast, my book, all of the things. And it's the Robin Graham.com. It's Robin with a Y and Graham like the cracker. So the T-H-E-R-O-B-Y-N-G-R-A-H-A-M.com. Guys, go check her out. Robin, thank you so much for being here today and spending your time with us. Thank you. It was truly an honor. I'm very grateful. Oh, thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. All right, folks, hang tight while I wrap this up, Robin. Uh, folks, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you like and subscribe. Keep coming back. We'll be back with another great guest to share what they're made of. In the meantime, go check out the RobinGram.com. Support our guests. We really appreciate it. It's Robin Graham and your boy C-Rock signing off from that one studio. Until next time, be that one.